Hey friends, happy new year, welcome, welcome back to my channel and to another video, my very first video of 2024. Today I wanted to share with you what I got for Christmas and that mainly includes a double Cartier unboxing. If you watch my Christmas wishlist video, you probably have a good idea of what these items are, but I'm so excited to share them with you because I had wanted them for a long time and I'm just really excited to finally have them. But before we get into it, I just wanted to quickly share the present that my brother got for me. And it is this really cool Barbie pink Saint Laurent catwalk book. I just love the embossed black on pink lettering and yeah, just a really cool gift that I really appreciate. It's also quite heavy, I won't lie. I'm getting really hot just holding it. But yeah, like I said, I think it's a really cool gift and I honestly think it's a testament to how well he knows me because to be honest aside from this channel and a couple of friends who are into luxury as well I don't really talk about luxury items or luxury shopping um so I think it's just really nice that he picked up on that and um, got me this especially because he does like to get books so he was able to kind of take my interest and gift me something that uh, he knew I'd really like, but in a form that is kind of his signature. And some of you watching this probably might already know, but I found out this book is part of a series called the Catwalk series. It's essentially a series of books put out by some of the major fashion houses. So there's also a Louis Vuitton version, a Chanel version, a Dior version. I believe also Versace, Tom Ford, um, Prada. And um, yeah, now I want them all. So <laughs> you might be seeing a few more of these in my future videos. Anyway, moving on to the Cartier unboxing. Forgive me, this won't be a true unboxing because I have been wearing both of these items pretty much every day since I've gotten them. I just could not wait to get them unboxed. I had actually wanted to buy both of these items back in July and I kind of just been putting it off. I'm not entirely sure why, but I ended up putting it off for so long that I just decided to wait until Christmas because I felt like that would make it a bit more special. And on top of that, I didn't actually go into the boutique to pick them up until two days after Christmas. So by that point, I couldn't wait any longer. Definitely didn't have it in me to wait until filming this video to unbox them. So again, I'm sorry if they've already been unboxed and worn, but I have put them back in their boxes so that I could share them with you in this video. So here's the bag. It came with this really nice holiday issue and it came with this little holiday card attached to the bag and i have to tell you i was actually worried that i wouldn't be able to get the items that i wanted in my size because like i said i had gone two days after christmas i kind of figured that people would have done their holiday shopping before christmas and i was assuming that you know stock would be low not to mention on the website when i checked in store availability the website indicated that the items in my size were low in stock but fortunately I was able to get both of the items in my size in store that day and the essay that I shopped with was actually the long time essay of my really good friend which is basically how I met her she was really nice and she kindly gave some extra little goodies with a purchase first she gave these two little travel pouches by the size of which you can probably tell what it is that I bought she also gave me a bunch of chocolates. There's a few down there to show you below. I'm just like in the little packaging. And she gave me two fragrance samples. One is uh, called Pasha, and the other one is called La Tante. So those will be nice to try. Anyway, this is my invoice and these are my certificates of authenticity. You know, I always think it's really nice when essays kind of treat you to these little extras, especially because I've heard other stories from people saying that they've had to specifically request these items or kind of go through a long, dragged out back and forth. You know, for a brand like Cartier that consumers spend so much money on, I feel like each of these jewelry pieces should just come with things like travel pouches and cleaning kits, much like they come with the brand's signature packaging. I think it's borderline petty when essays 
kind of give consumers such a hard time accessing these little extras that are really just there to help them maintain their jewelry pieces over time. But that's just my opinion. I don't work for Cartier. Maybe the employees there have reason for this. But anyway, I'm just really appreciative of the essay that I did my shopping with. I think she was so sweet and so friendly and she did everything she could to kind of make my first Cartier shopping experience special and memorable. Okay, so let's get to the good stuff. Here's box number one. Look at how luxurious that wrapping was, by the way, with the wax seal and the folding. I completely ruined it. I feel so bad. I tried really, really hard to keep the wrapping nice, but if I say it used double-sided tape and the way that it was applied, it was just impossible to not completely ruin the wrapping. So it is what it is. Am I the only one like that? I really enjoy packaging and I like to keep it, you know, in good shape if I can. You know, when people like unwrap and package things and they, and they rip wrapping paper and things like that i can't do that you know it kind of <laughs> that might not be normal but i like to keep my wrapping really nice and pristine if i can especially with, since it was my, my first purchase um i thought i would try and do it carefully so that i could keep it in kind of as like memorabilia anyway let me take this out of the wrapping here is the shimmery red cartier gift box and inside you have this really beautiful red jewelry box with gold detailing. And it has this little protective bit right there. And then when you press this button, it just pops open like so. And yes, this is my first Cartier piece, the Slim Love Ring in yellow gold, size 51. So what do we think? I really love it. Like I said, I had been planning to buy this piece for a really long time. You know, this is a lot of people's starting piece with Cartier because it is, you know, from such an iconic line and it's also at a lower price point. With that said, I have heard other people kind of express that they think it is not interesting enough for them to kind of spend the money on because it is essentially just a band style ring and it's just a very simple style and i've heard other people say that you know they wouldn't buy it because it's such a popular piece and so it doesn't feel as special or unique so some people do recommend instead going with the justin clou ring uh, because it does have a bit more presence and has more of a unique look personally i tend to just buy what i like so the you know, issue that some people have with it being kind of too popular, um, too common, I, you know, that doesn't really bother me. And it really didn't weigh in my decision of whether to get it or not. I was always going to pick this up eventually. But to the other point about it kind of being really simple, to be honest, when you wear it kind of just on its own, for example, like this, you can see that I can kind of see why people would think it's a bit boring and why you know, the Justin Clou and the look of the Justin Clou ring would be a bit more appealing because that ring is a bit more unique and it makes more of a statement. But I personally bought the love ring to stack with my BCA pearls of gold ring like this. It's not very straight. I don't know if you can see that, but, and when I wear it like this, I feel like it becomes, you know, immediately way more eye-catching than just wearing the love by itself. In my opinion, it's just a really beautiful combination, and it's still really simple, which I like. Of course, I realize that doing this means that you have to buy two rings instead of one, which automatically increases the cost of your purchase. Nonetheless, this is just one way to consider wearing the love ring, especially if you think that wearing it by itself is a little boring, a little underwhelming, and you're looking for something with a bit more presence, I would consider stacking it. So yeah, that's something to consider, but overall, I personally really, really like wearing it like this, and I'm super happy with this purchase.
Okay, so here is box number two. I've shown you the packaging and everything already, so I'm just going to start with the red gift box. And again, you have the signature Cartier jewelry box, so protective thingy. And the second Cartier piece in my collection is the small Justin Clou ring in yellow gold, again in size 51. Again, I love this piece. Like I said earlier, I do find it a bit more unique and a bit edgier than, you know, the slim love ring. But because it's in the small size, I also find that it is still very dainty and feminine, which I really, really like. What I will say about the Justin Clou ring is that you have to be really mindful of sizing, especially if you are ordering it online and you tend to be between sizes. Because of this, I would recommend going into a boutique and trying it on beforehand if one is accessible to you. Ultimately though, the size that you choose is going to be a matter of comfort and even preference in terms of fit, but there are some things to keep in mind when choosing a size, especially if you're not purchasing from boutique directly and will be able to try it on first. Hopefully what I say next will be helpful to you in this regard. So after buying the Justin Clou ring, I now understand why it's recommended to size down because this ring actually fits a bit bigger than the love ring despite them both being the same size. So if you recall, I bought them both in size 51. I bought the love ring for my right ring finger and here it fits flush against my skin. However, on this same ring finger, my Justin Clou fits a bit bigger. And I assume that that's to make room for this little nail head fit. Regardless, that's not really an issue for me because I specifically bought the Justin Clou for my left middle finger, which itself is ever so slightly bigger than my right ring finger. So the same size 51 fits better on my left middle finger. And because some of my other fingers can accommodate the same size ring, I've kind of been playing around with how to wear both of them. And I've noticed that while the Justin Clou fits on my index fingers as well, when I wear them there, it eventually makes an indent. And depending on where the nail head is positioned, it's even a bit painful. As many of us do, I watched tons of videos about both of these rings before buying them. And something that I learned about the Justin Clou ring is that if you are wearing it and it's hurting you, what you can do is actually move the nail head so that it is not sitting directly on top of your vein. That should actually keep it from hurting you. And I've tried it as well and when I've worn this on my index fingers and I've made sure that the nail head is positioned away from the vein, I still get the indent in my finger eventually but I no longer have any pain. So that's something to keep in mind when you're wearing your Justin Clou. Of course, while it is ideal with the Justin Clou for the ring to be at least a little bit snug so that you don't get a ton of movement of the nail head around your finger, I understand that that might still be uncomfortable for you. And in that case, I would recommend sizing up from your regular ring size for that finger. But when I talk about, you know, adjusting the position of the nail head, it's more for if you know sizing up would make the ring too loose because like i said if it's too loose on your finger then the nail head is going to move around a lot more which i imagine would be really annoying and i think would also probably enhance the wear and tear so definitely keep that in mind another thing to keep in mind is whether your fingers are prone to swelling in the heat because you really wouldn't want to be left unable to wear your ring either during certain seasons or in certain climates again your sizing will ultimately depend on your personal preference and comfort levels but these are just a few things to consider when choosing the size of your Justin Clou ring especially if you're unable to make it to a boutique to try on before you purchase it. Hopefully all of that made sense.
Overall, I had a really great in-store shopping experience with Cartier. My essay was so sweet and so helpful and I'm so grateful to have been introduced to her. And because of how welcoming she was, I am definitely keen to shop with her again. Speaking of which, someone really needs to hit me off the website because every time I look, I add something to my wish list. Anyway, I'm by no means an expert uh, on either of these rings having just purchased them recently. But regardless, I hope that this video was helpful for those of you interested in buying them as well. Eventually though, I will do a wear and tear video on them for you. But in the meantime, if you have either of these items and have any advice or thoughts to add that I've forgotten or left out, definitely leave them in the comments below because I would love to hear them and I'm sure others would as well. But those are the items I got for Christmas. If you exchanged gifts or gifted yourself something for the holidays, I'd love to hear what you got, luxury or otherwise. And as always, I've put links to the items in the description in case you're interested in checking them out. Anyway, I'll be back with another video next week. In the meantime though, please come join me over on Instagram where I share curated photos and videos. But that's it for today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you in the next one.